We have a Brandon Ingram injury update, and it's positive for the Pelicans' playoff chances. But what will their rotation look like once they're in the postseason? I'll tell you what to expect and how the center position might go in today's episode of Locked on Pelicans. Let's go. You are Locked on Pelicans, your daily New Orleans Pelicans podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to another edition of Locked On Pelicans, the daily podcast covering your favorite team, the New Orleans Pelicans and NBA, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day, available wherever you get your podcast and available on YouTube. I'm your host, Pelicans Insider, credential member of the media, Jake Madison, at Nola Jake on Twitter, here with y'all on this Tuesday, a game day for the New Orleans Pelicans. So they travel up to Portland to take on the Trailblazers. Should be an easy win. We'll talk about that a little bit in the third segment of today's show, but that's going to go a long way towards boosting their playoff chances. What will also boost their playoff chances is getting Brandon Ingram back. And we have a positive injury update provided by the Pelicans. And I'll tell you when we maybe expect him to play. That's going to be in today's episode of Locked On Pelicans. And of course, thank you for making Locked On Pelicans your first listen today and every day. We are here Monday through Friday, the number one Pelicans podcast covering everything you want to know about this team. Subscribe wherever you get your podcast. Join almost 10,000 Pelicans fans on YouTube. Today's episode of Locked On Pelicans is brought to you by LinkedIn Jobs, which helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on MBA. That's linkedin.com slash locked on MBA to post your job for free terms and conditions apply. And of course, Thank you for making Lockdown Pelicans your first listen today and every day. Become an everydayer. That means you listen Monday through Friday. And if you're an everydayer, let me know in the comments down below on YouTube. It's one of the best ways you can support the show. Help keep it free in five days a week for y'all. So Brandon Ingram has been out since he had that hyperextension of his knee on March 21st in the game against the Orlando Magic. Well, on Sunday morning, he was reevaluated, and Ingram has been cleared to begin individual on-court workouts and will gradually increase the intensity of the rehabilitation schedule. Ingram is scheduled to miss. He missed the game against the Phoenix Suns that they won, and he is not playing in this game against the Portland Trailblazers. The Pelicans know a return to play date has not yet been determined. But the fact that he's been cleared to play and is going through the on-court side of things means a return is soon. And while it would be great to get him back sooner rather than later, as long as you get him for the actual postseason or the in-season tournament games, and it's about maybe 50-50 for which one they're going to have, which route they're going to go, as long as you get him back, you're going to feel much better about your chances, right? Particularly the in-season tournament, having both him and Zion Williamson, who may be at his best game ever as a professional, go see yesterday's show if you haven't already, makes you feel a whole lot better because they've been missing a lot of what Brandon Ingram has brought this season. And look, there have been times when I've been very critical of Brandon Ingram, some of his shot selection. We talked about how in the game against the Phoenix Suns, the Pelicans took 39, 40, 41, whatever the number was, of three-point attempts, and that he needs to shoot more threes because they need more shooting out there. But he's also still been a, the second-best player for the team this season. Right, He's their leader in assists. He's giving them over 20 points per game. You need a guy like that, particularly in the postseason, where sometimes you just got to take difficult shots and hopefully make difficult shots. And Brandon Ingram can definitely do that. And if he's shooting threes, we're going to feel real good about where this team can go. On this season, he's averaging 21 points per game, 5.8 rebounds. Uh, sorry, five five rebounds, 5.8 assists. He's shooting 36% from three, 49% from the field overall. He's having a very, very good season. He's getting to the line, making his free throws. All of those are really important things to this Pelican squad. But most importantly, they've been missing some of his playmaking. Right. Look at how the team kind of took off in the game against the Phoenix Suns with Larry Nance Jr. kind of in that secondary playmaking role. It allowed C.J. McCollum to be a little bit more off ball and to go out and just shoot and kind of score instead of trying to pass and set other guys up, which he can do at times. Don't get me wrong with all of that. He had five assists against the Phoenix Suns, but you'd rather him just be that guy who beats teams when they play drop coverage, as we talked about with the coaching adjustments that they made in that game. Let him be a shooter. Let him be a scorer, an off-ball scorer in particular, and work around that way. And we've seen that that is the best version of him. 
Earlier on in the season, last season, they wanted him to be floor general, C.J. McCollum. And that hasn't just been the best role. I think he likes the idea of having the ball in his hands more. Certainly, who wouldn't, right? But I think we found what the best role for him is, and it's off ball. Right now, he can't do that as much, as much, because they're missing Brandon Ingram. But when you put Brandon Ingram back out there on the court, it frees up CJ to be a spot-up shooter and a couple of other things. And that, I think, is really important for how this team wants to operate. That means he can rip threes. He doesn't need to worry about driving and some of those things because you have Zion who can do that, Brandon Ingram who can do that, and kind of fill those roles with this team. So bringing Brandon Ingram back as that secondary playmaker takes tons of pressure and allows CJ to do what CJ does best. It takes some pressure off of Zion Williamson and gives him a little bit of a break. Look, handling the ball every single time down the court is going to be exhausting, and I don't know how fully sustainable that is. So if you can get another guy out there to handle the rock a little bit, hence Jose Alvarado being back and that being a real significant thing for this team, it, it eases things up on him and can let him perform in the way that he can in the fourth quarter where he was excellent against the Phoenix Suns. So adding Brandon Ingram back in this team, it's going to help you with rebound. It's going to help you with playmaking. It's going to help you with scoring. It's also going to help you with defense. He's been a good, a good defender this year. There's no getting around that. The effort we've seen, we have not seen since his rookie year in Los Angeles. The role he's playing and that length and the tools he has to kind of bottle people up, press the point of attack a little bit more, or poke the ball through in lanes, in passing lanes, is really great. And this team thrives when they're forcing turnovers and they can get out and run and we don't need to worry about them as much in the half court, which is where they've struggled at times this year. So getting Brandon Ingram back is going to be massive for this team. If you want to see a late push for the sixth seed, Brandon Ingram playing, and look, they have a back-to-back -back coming up where he's likely not going to play in both of those. So you, we live in kind of an area, area here where maybe he plays against the Sacramento Kings or the Golden State Warriors, then they have a day off, and then they take on the Lakers. I would expect he'll play in that Lakers game, and one of these two games coming up, hopefully, whether it's the first game of the back-to-back -back against the Sacramento Kings or the second one against the Golden State Warriors, remains to be seen. I don't know which one's better to play him in either. The Pelicans are 4-0 so far this year against the Phoenix, or sorry, against the Sacramento Kings, but it's tough to beat a team five, five times in a row. I don't know. So maybe it's better to play him in that game to ensure you get it. You know, I've long said that usually the way you want to approach back-to-backs is you play the guy on the easier of the two, the gimme win, just to ensure that you get the gimme win, knowing that then you can go one and one in a back-to-back -back versus if you play him in the harder game, still lose, then don't play him in the easier game and that team surprises you, you go 0-2. Oh one and one you, you want to go 2-0 and oh in this, right? The Pelicans need to kind of go 4-0 and oh over the remaining part of this season if they want to try and get the sixth seed. And it's going to be close. They're back into it after beating the Phoenix Suns. But if we count this, this Portland game as a win, and we shouldn't, more on that in the third segment, and then you have three games remaining, getting Brandon Ingram back for two of those makes you feel like you could go 2-0 and oh during that. So you could be looking at a 3-1 and one stretch here once Brandon Ingram kind of returns if you count this Portland game as a win already. It sounds good to me for the Pelicans to enter the postseason with some momentum and for Brandon Ingram to come in and shake a little bit of the rust off, which is something that he usually deals with when he comes back from injury. But that's a positive injury update. And I'm hopeful we'll see him on the court before that final game. But definitely, I would imagine, during and by that final game against the Los Angeles Lakers. So coming up, Pelicans are kind of in postseason mode already right now. So what's the rotation a general idea going to look like these next four games? What will it look like in the playing tournament or first round series? And how does the center position factor into that? Jonas Valanciunas, Larry Nance Jr. That's coming up here next in today's episode of Locked on Pelicans. Right now, though, I'm excited to tell you about LinkedIn because when you're hiring for your small business, you want to find quality professionals that are right for the role, and that's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs is the tools to help you find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. And LinkedIn isn't just another job board. LinkedIn has a vast network of more than a billion professionals, which makes it the best place to hire. It gives you access to professionals you can't find anywhere else. And LinkedIn does all of that while making the process easy and intuitive. So hiring is easy when you have that many qualified candidates. So easy, in fact, that 
66% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. And LinkedIn is constantly finding ways to make the process easier. They even just launched a feature that helps you write job descriptions, making the process even easier and quicker. So post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on MBA. That's linkedin.com slash locked on MBA to post your job for free terms and conditions apply. And thank you for making Locked On Pelicans your first listen today and every day. We are here Monday through Friday, the number one Pelicans podcast, covering down, breaking down everything you want to know about the team, whether it's Zion's play, whether it's coaching adjustments that we saw in that win over the Phoenix Suns. If you're an everydayer, you already knew what that was because we talked about it and you already listened to the show. And if you haven't, go back and listen to that one and become an everyday era going forward so you know what's going on with this Pelicans team as they march towards the playoffs. And don't forget, April 15th, live in-person recorded episode of Locked on Pelicans. We're going to be doing the show live with an audience, and that could mean you at Mid-City Yacht Club, April 15th. It's the Monday after the season ends, starting at 7 p.m. I'm going to be there. I have guests lined up for the show. We're going to do a live Q&A after. There's going to be raffle prizes. We're doing this in conjunction with the Pels 12 who do their watch parties there. They'll have a watch party for every away postseason game for New Orleans also. So it's going to be a lot of fun. I hope to see you there doing Locked on Pelicans live, in person, getting you set for the play-in tournament, or hopefully an actual postseason series. How are the Pelicans going to win? What do they need to worry about? And then just looking at the team going forward. Uh, we'll announce the guests maybe tomorrow or the next day or so. It's going to be a lot of fun. So I hope to see you there. Come, I might even buy you a drink. It's going to be a lot of fun. It's a great place to watch games as well. So let's get into the rotation because this is something a lot of y'all asked me about. You know, I don't think, you know, when I put out a call for questions, what's the rotation going to look like? It's going to look like what we've seen largely it be already. Willie Green and the Pelicans have kind of been in postseason mode, I'd say, for the past couple of weeks. You know, every game has really mattered. You can rise or fall in the standings pretty quickly. It's not really time to experiment and do new things. And you've got to just go with what works and what you trust. And Willie Green has an idea of what that is, right? Going in, let's say everyone's healthy. The postseason is going to be... About a nine-man rotation. Zion Williamson, C.J. McCollum, Brandon Ingram, Herb Jones, Jonas Valanciunas is your starting five, right? Then you're going to have Larry Nance Jr. off the bench, Jose Alvarado, Najee Marshall, and Dyson Daniels. That's what I expect the rotation to be. No Jordan Hawkins in there. Oh, and Trey Murphy. Sorry, Trey Murphy is going to be in there as well. So maybe fewer minutes for Dyson um, and Najee, but definitely Trey is going to be in there as well. That's a key one. I can't believe I forgot that. Right, he's starting games right now. So that's going to be their rotation going forward. Kind of nine guys, but I think they would even like to cut it down a little bit more. The problem is they can't cut it down a little bit more, and that's because of the center position. When you look at this, right, Jonas Valanciunas playing under four minutes against the Phoenix Suns, and then Larry Nance Jr. playing the rest of the way, you can't have Larry play then 45 minutes or something like that. You want Larry in that like 25-minute range, maybe 30-minute range max, Jonas, if you're not going to play him those other center minutes, right, you know, 25, you know, at that point, you've got to fill out 48 minutes, right? That's 23 minutes. If Larry Nance Jr. plays 25 and you don't want to play him that many, you got to have another guy kind of step in. And that means going with a super small lineup, Zion at the five, Dyson Daniels kind of playing the five, maybe Trey Murphy at the five as well. Those are the type of things I think that you'll be seeing from this team in the postseason. And I would not be shocked if you see them experiment with some of that right now you know when it comes to the center spot and that's really the big question mark about this team there's some you know when you look at Jonas Valanciunas Larry Nance Jr. right if we could combine him into one player that player would be excellent and unfortunately we can't do that the technology doesn't exist we also I don't know there's ethical concerns about doing something like that too I guess as well um it's got all sci-fi and stuff here all of a sudden so you know they have pros and cons and there's certain matchups that just work well in one of their favors but not in the other and it just depends who you get right the Los Angeles Clippers I think you can play Jonas Valanciunas a bunch in because Zubac really isn't going to be able to do much against a team like the Minnesota Timberwolves or even the Oklahoma City Thunder it's a little bit of a different story maybe Jonas can can kind of hang with Chet Holmgren but Holmgren can play on the perimeter and that's been a problem for Jonas So maybe not. Maybe you need a guy like Larry to go small against that real big Minnesota Timberwolves team, which is where their strength lies with Rudy Gobert. Though Zion's going to be able to handle that. And then we look at a team like, say, the Denver Nuggets, and just no one has an answer to that in Nikola Jokic. So as I'm recording this, I'm in Denver right now, actually. So when you look at it, 
you know, they may, the minutes for both of them are tough to try and figure out because depending on the matchup, one might play a bunch and one might not play at all, or they might kind of play a little bit evenly. And that's how it's likely going to go, right? Just depending on the matchup, they might be able to really feature or they might not be able to. Again, I think the Clippers, which is probably not going to happen. I think Dallas is about to lock themselves into the fifth seed. So New Orleans would be looking, you know, at best as the sixth seed, right? But then that puts you into the kind of that third spot, and that could be Minnesota, Denver, or or OKC. As I'm recording this right now, it's Minnesota at one, Denver at two, and OKC at three. So it just it's tough to really look ahead and be like here's what their playoff rotation is going to look like cuz it would look different against all three of those teams depending on the game plan that they want to go with and we just saw uh Willie Green and his coaching staff come up with a very good game plan against the Phoenix Suns team so they're definitely capable of figuring out the exact right thing to do i also don't think the plan was only to play Jonas Valančiūnas under 4 minutes in that game so being able to kind of come up with it on the fly too and game plan some of that at least defensively i think is going to be an advantage for New Orleans also. So things are still really up in the air with that, but I don't think you're going to see Jordan Hawkins. Willie Green just doesn't trust him. If you can get that three-point shooting from all of these guys, and that means someone like Brandon Ingram shooting more threes, I think you're going to be okay without Hawkins out there who defensively has not been great. He has some moments when he makes plays, certainly, but is he a good defender all the time? Like, no, he is not, and that's an area that he needs to work on and grow. I don't know if it's the right decision not to play him at all, Right, It might come down to a later adjustment in a series if he starts to get minutes as a counter because you're not getting shooting, you're not getting the court space for Zion Williamson like you need, and that's going to be a big part of it. You know, It might also depend on the three-point shooting from Jose, from Najee, right? from Dyson. You know, If they're hitting their shots, and at times they have it and times they've not, that kind of changes things too and changes literally like the calculus of all of this because some of it is a numbers game, some of it is a math game. And that's an important way to look at it too. So... It's we have a general idea of what their rotation is going to look like, but I think it is so matchup dependent that we don't really know. You know, when they play the Sacramento Kings and could potentially play them in the first round or in you know in in the seven eight game of the in season tournament, that looks a little bit different, right? I think there's some things we know for certain. I would expect they would start Jonas Valanciunas in most things because that's just what they've done all season. And switching from that would be a dramatic change. And I don't think they're going to do that just yet. But everything else is still kind of up in the air with what it might look like and how they're going to play and what the rotation is going to be. But look, Willie Green's going to rely on his guys, right? He's going to rely on his guys. We know that much. You're definitely going to see Larry off the bench, Trey off the bench, Jose off the bench, Najee off the bench. Dyson's the one kind of big question mark. And I think once we see Brandon Ingram return, maybe in that final game against the Lakers, if they, if either team needs to win it, you'll get an idea of what the playoff rotation may look like at that point in time. So coming up next, You know, I was doing a thing where I kind of looked back. You know, I think sometimes we focus on the here and the now with players, with the schedule. I want to look at some of the early games and things that might come back to haunt New Orleans. You might think this is not like a helpful exercise, but I promise it is. And let's look at that. And that's coming up here next in today's episode of Locked on Pelicans. Right now, though, I'm going to tell you about game time because this is where I get my tickets from. You ever had like a frustrating experience trying to buy tickets? You don't know if it was going to be like good seats. You don't know if this was a good deal. It's last minute. The price is good. Don't worry about any of that with game time. I buy t- my tickets to Saints games. I bought floor seats to a Pelicans game through there. Went to the Saints Rams game in SoFi with money I saved by going to game time because game time. Game time takes kind of the question marks around buying tickets away. And one of my favorite things is last minute deals. I have friends texting me, should I go to the Pelicans game tonight? Well, yeah, get on game time because you could save up to 60% off buying last minute tickets for sports, concerts, comedy, theater, whatever it is you might be looking for. They also have the lowest price guarantee. If you find tickets in the same section and row for less after you've bought your tickets, they're going to credit you 110% of the difference. So, You can buy your tickets knowing that you're always going to get the best possible 
price. And I think that's one of the biggest things. And then you see your seats, the view from the seats before you buy. So you know you're getting exactly what you want. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NBA for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code Locked On NBA. Locked On NBA. L O C K E D O N NBA for twenty dollars off. Download the Game Time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed. And thank you for making Locked On Pelicans your first listen today and every day. We are the number one Pelicans podcast covering everything you want, whether it's in-game adjustments, looking at the rotation, right? Giving you injury updates, breaking down the play of guys like Zion Williamson taking middies, mid-range jumpers the other day and why that's important. More on that maybe later in the week too, especially if he takes more against Portland here. And I wouldn't be shocked if he breaks that out. I think he wants to test it out in a game a little bit more. So I expect to see all of that. I'm looking forward to all of the coverage here going into the postseason because there are some postseason things assuredly for new orleans then after that this is a big off season you're gonna have to make a trade you're gonna draft someone potentially have two first round picks all of that we're gonna cover it all here so we'll get you caught up on the draft everything you need to know going forward subscribe wherever you get your podcast join almost 10,000 pelicans fans on youtube as well we are part of the locked on podcast network your team every day and come to the live show literally not just a live streaming on youtube show though it will be doing that as well but live in person come say hi to me some of the guests that we're going to have we're going to do an actual episode of locked on pelicans there then we're going to do a live q a with the audience after so if you got a question you want to put it to the panel i'll tell you the guests hopefully tomorrow you'll be able to do that come have a drink talk some pelicans meet other pelicans fans and get excited for the postseason and know how the pelicans are going to win what they need to worry about and everything you need to know going forward mid city yacht club 7 p.m central on monday april 15th that's a week from yesterday i can't wait to do this it's going to be a lot of fun there's going to be prizes raffles all of those things i got the locked on pelican stickers with me i can't wait i will see y'all then so the pelicans are kind of fighting for their playoff lives right now and it's annoying and it's frustrating, right? That's why I said you could look at the season as a disappointment. Even if they get in, even if they get in as the sixth seed, felt like they could have been the fourth seed. Felt like they could have been the third seed potentially here. Maybe not that high. Because you look at how many games that they kind of wasted away. And one of the things that I, I really want people to consider is every game matters in a season. It doesn't feel like it, right? It feels like the regular season doesn't truly matter. And to an extent it doesn't. It's more about the postseason. I get it. But every game in the regular season matters towards getting there. A loss in the beginning of the year is the same as the loss at the end in terms of the standings. So the Pelicans kind of blowing some games and we can just kind of like do this off the, the top of our heads, right? The more recently, the San Antonio Spurs game. But before that, there's that game in Dallas, right, where they didn't play anyone in the first one. They won somehow unexpectedly. No Zion, no CJ, no BI, something like that. They won. Then all those guys played in the next game and they lost. That was super frustrating. They blew two games to the Houston Rockets. John Morant has played nine games this season and has two game-winning shots against the Pelicans, right? That's one, two, three, four, five. That's six games that I just stated out here that if you could add to their win total right now would put them in the running would, would have them solidly in the fourth seat right now you know no matter how the season ends up it's going to be a little bit disappointing than what it could have been because they were very wasteful early on in the year and they were still figuring some things out right we said they needed to try and you know i long said they weren't reaching their full potential and that could be viewed as a good thing the problem is, however, they're still at times not reaching their full potential, and that's why it's going to potentially hurt them. If they end up going into the playing tournament and lose, they only have themselves to blame for this, not the schedule, right? One of the things that I think is worth noting about their schedule, though it's backloaded, is looking at it over the course of the season, it was a pretty even schedule. It was right around the middle of the pack in terms of strength of schedule. It was right in the middle of the pack in, in terms of number of back to back. And then you can look at rest advantages, rest disadvantages and all of those things. Like none of this was overly tough. Now it got a little bit harder in terms of strength of schedule because the West is brutal this year. So it goes up from what we were maybe expecting. I don't think we were expecting OKC to potentially be the one seed in the West, but it wasn't what I would call like anything that was like abnormally hard, especially compared to any other team. So 
for them to kind of be in the position they're in, which look, I like games mattering late in, you know, in April, April basketball mattering is not something that we usually get here in New Orleans. So this is cool. Don't get me wrong. Oh, it's been a little more stressful for all of us than it should have been, hasn't it? Like a way more stressful for all of us than it really should have been. And that I think is one of the disappointing things. They really are going to only have themselves to blame. And so even if they get into the postseason, even if they win a first round playoff series, I don't think you can just look back at the season and be like, no, no lessons to learn right there. There's a lot of lessons to learn and a lot of things that really could have changed the outcome of their season. Again, to be pretty healthy all year long for the most part, right? Zion has played more games than he ever has in his career. Brian Ingram has played more games this season than he has since his his rookie year. Did I say freshman earlier? Rookie year in the NBA. You know, and to only be the six seed with some of the depth they had, even though I said I don't think they're as deep as a lot of people want to make them out to be, is disappointing. To not have figured out the center position or really have answers to that is, frankly, disappointing. I think we all agree with that. So even if they make the postseason, those losses from earlier on in the year and how you lost those games – Coaching decisions, right? Rotations, lack of offense, defensive lineups, things like that. That all can't be forgotten here, right? Those games early in the season still matter today. Now, this applies to to guys' play too, right? I've seen a lot of people really get on CJ McCollum recently, and and I don't really agree with a lot of that. I'd cut a couple of things out, but especially in that game against the San Antonio Spurs when no one wanted to shoot and he was just going to let it fly. CJ, do your thing. You're doing nothing wrong there. Would have been nice to make the shots, but make or miss league, right? We can use that cliche here. You know, overall, even if you don't like his play recently, he's had a good season and he won them some games earlier on in the year and they wouldn't be where they are without CJ averaging 19 and a half points per game, four rebounds, 4.6 assists and shooting. Where's his three point number? It's probably gone up for 41 and a half percent on eight attempts per game. He's making 3.4 threes per game. That's a big number, y'all. That's a real important number for this team, too. And you saw it against the Phoenix Suns. You've got to look at the season as a whole and not just the way the season ended. Whether that's good or bad, that's worth keeping in mind. So all those games early on in the season still matter, too, for the final standings, whether this team's going to get in or not, or whether they're going to have to go through the play-in tournament. Hopefully not the latter. Hopefully it's going to be the actual playoffs. But even if it's the in-season tournament, if you learn your lessons and kind of look back at some of those games and know what you need to do to win, you can get out of the play-in tournament and back into the postseason as well. Just going to be a little bit longer and you're going to be a little bit worn down. But look, get in. That's the most important thing. Let me know what you think about some of those early season losses for the Pelicans here in the comments down below. Are you excited to see Brandon Ingram return? Do you have a prediction of when Brandon Ingram is going to return? And are you going to come? Are you going to come to the the watch party that we hit? Not watch party. The live ep- the live recorded episode of Lockdown Pelicans. I don't even know what to say. The live in-person episode. That's what I need to say. Of Lockdown Pelicans. I'll see you there. Mid-City Yacht Club, 7 p.m. on Monday, April 15th. It's going to be a lot of fun. I hope to see you there. Blow it up. If you see the flyer on Twitter, just retweet it. Tell your friends. Bring everybody. Get there a little bit early so you can grab a table and a good spot for everything. It's going to be a lot of fun. I can't wait for it. I will see you all then. And that's going to do it for this episode of Lockdown Pelicans, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. As always, I'm your host, Jake Madison, at Nola Jake on Twitter. And I'll be back with you all tomorrow to recap, hopefully, a Pelicans win.